Section One of Aesop's Fables, a new revised version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Chenevere in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Aesop's Fables, a new revised version. Section One. THE WOLF TURNED SHEPHERD A wolf, finding that the sheep were so afraid of him that he could not get near them, disguised himself in the dress of a shepherd, and, thus attired, approached the flock. As he came near he found the shepherd fast asleep. As the sheep did not run away, he resolved to imitate the voice of the shepherd. In trying to do so he only howled and awoke the shepherd. As he could not run away, he was soon killed. Those who attempt to act in disguise are apt to overdo it. THE STAG AT THE POOL A stag saw his shadow reflected in the water, and greatly admired the size of his horns, but felt angry with himself for having such weak feet. While he was thus contemplating himself, a lion appeared at the pool. The stag betook himself to flight, and kept himself with ease at a safe distance from the lion, until he entered a wood and became entangled with his horns. The lion quickly came up with him and caught him. When too late he thus reproached himself, Woe is me! How have I deceived myself? These feet which would have saved me I despised and I gloried in these antlers which have proved my destruction. What is most truly valuable is often underrated. THE FOX AND THE MASK A fox entered the house of an actor, and, rummaging through all his properties, came upon a mask, an admirable imitation of a human head. He placed his paws on it, and said, What a beautiful head! yet it is of no value, as it entirely wants brains. A fair face is of little use without sense. THE BEAR AND THE FOX A boar boasted very much of his philanthropy, saying that of all the animals he was the most tender in his regard for man, for he had such respect for him that he would not even touch his dead body. A fox, hearing these words, said with a smile to the bear, Oh, that you would eat the dead and not the living? We should not wait till a person is dead to give him our respect. THE WOLF AND THE LAMB A wolf, meeting with a lamb astray from the fold, resolved not to lay violent hands on him, but to find some plea which should justify to the lamb himself his right to eat him. He then addressed him, "'Sir, last year you grossly insulted me.' "'Indeed,' bleated the lamb in a mournful tone of voice, "'I was not then born.' "'Then,' said the wolf, "'you feed in my pasture.' "'No, good sir,' replied the lamb, "'I have not yet tasted grass.' "'Again,' said the wolf, "'you drink at my well.' "'No,' exclaimed the lamb, "'I never yet drank water.' for as yet my mother's milk is both food and drink to me. On which the wolf seized him and ate him up, saying, Well, I won't remain supperless, even though you refute every one of my imputations. The tyrant will always find a pretext for his tyranny, and it is useless for the innocent to try by reasoning to get justice, when the oppressor intends to be unjust. THE ONE-EYED DOE A doe, blind of an eye, was accustomed to graze as near to the edge of the sea as she possibly could to secure greater safety. She turned her eye toward the land that she might perceive the approach of a hunter or hound, and her injured eye toward the sea from which she entertained no anticipation of danger. Some boatmen sailing by saw her and, taking a successful aim, mortally wounded her. Said she, 
Oh, wretched creature that I am, to take such precaution against the land, and, after all, to find this seashore, to which I had come for safety, so much more perilous. Danger sometimes comes from a source that is least suspected. THE DOG, COCK, AND FOX A dog and a cock, traveling together, took shelter at night in a thick wood. The cock perched himself on a high branch, while the dog found a bed at the foot of the tree. When morning dawned, the cock, as usual, crowed very loudly. A fox, hearing the sound and wishing to make a breakfast on him, came and stood under the branches, saying how earnestly he desired to make the acquaintance of the owner of so sweet a voice. "'If you will admit me,' said he, "'I should very much like to spend the day with you.' The cock said, "'Sir, do me the favor to go round and wake up my porter, that he may open the door and let you in.' On the fox approaching the tree, the dog sprang out and caught him and quickly tore him to pieces. Those who try to entrap others are often caught by their own schemes. THE MOUSE, THE FROG, AND THE HAWK A mouse, by an unlucky chance, formed an intimate acquaintance with a frog. The frog, one day intent on mischief, bound the foot of the mouse tightly to his own. Thus joined together, the frog led his friend toward the pool in which he lived, until he reached the very brink, when suddenly jumping in, he dragged the mouse in with him. The frog enjoyed the water amazingly, and swam croaking about as if he had done a meritorious action. The unhappy mouse was soon suffocated with the water, and his dead body floated about on the surface, tied to the foot of the frog. A hawk observed it, and, pouncing upon it, carried it up aloft. The frog, being still fastened to the leg of the mouse, was also carried off a prisoner, and was eaten by the hawk. Harm hatch, harm catch. THE DOG AND THE OYSTER A dog, used to eating eggs, saw an oyster, and, opening his mouth to its widest extent, swallowed it down with the utmost relish, supposing it to be an egg. Soon afterwards, suffering great pain in his stomach, he said, I deserve all this torment for my folly in thinking that everything round must be an egg. Who acts in haste repents at leisure. THE WOLF AND THE SHEPHERDS a wolf, passing by, saw some shepherds in a hut eating for their dinner a haunch of mutton. Approaching them, he said, What a clamor you would raise if I were to do as you are doing! Men are too apt to condemn in others the very things they practice themselves. THE HARES AND THE FROGS The hares, oppressed with a sense of their own exceeding timidity, and weary of the perpetual alarm to which they were exposed, with one accord, determined to put an end to themselves and their troubles by jumping from a lofty precipice into a deep lake below. As they scampered off in a very numerous body to carry out their resolve, the frogs lying on the banks of the lake heard the noise of their feet, and rushed helter-skelter to the deep water for safety. On seeing the rapid disappearance of the frogs, one of the hares cried out to his companions, "'Stay, my friends! Do not do as you intended, for you now see that other creatures who yet live are more timorous than ourselves. We are encouraged by seeing others that are worse off than ourselves.'" THE LION AND THE BOAR On a summer day, when the great heat induced a general thirst, a lion and a boar came at the same moment to a small well to drink. They fiercely disputed which of them should drink first, and were soon engaged in the agonies of a mortal combat. On their stopping on a sudden to take breath for the fierce renewal of the strife, they saw some vultures waiting in the distance to feast on the one which should fall first. They at once made up their quarrel, saying, 
it is better for us to make friends than to become the food of crows or vultures as will certainly happen if we are disabled those who strive are often watched by them who will take advantage of their defeat to benefit themselves the mischievous dog a dog used to run up quietly to the heels of those he met and to bite them without notice his master sometimes suspended a bell about his neck that he might give notice of his presence wherever he went and sometimes he fastened a chain about his neck to which was attached a heavy clog so that he could not be so quick at biting people's heels the dog grew proud of his bell and clog and went with them all over the market-place an old hound said to him why do you make such an exhibition of yourself that bell and clog that you carry are not believe me orders of merit but on the contrary marks of disgrace a public notice to all men to avoid you as an ill-mannered dog those who achieve notoriety often mistake it for fame the quack frog a frog once made proclamation to all the beasts that he was a learned physician and able to heal all diseases a fox asked him how can you pretend to prescribe for others and you are unable to heal your own lame gait and wrinkled skin those who pretend that they can mend others should first mend themselves and then they will be more readily believed the ass the fox and the lion the ass and the fox having entered into a partnership together went out into the forest to hunt they had not proceeded far when they met a lion the fox approached the lion and promised to contrive for him the capture of the ass if he would pledge his word that his own life should be spared on his assuring him that he would not injure him the fox led the ass to a deep pit and contrived that he would fall into it the lion seeing that the ass was secured immediately clutched the fox and then attacked the ass at his leisure traitors must expect treachery the wolf and the sheep a wolf being sick and maimed called to a sheep who was passing and asked him to fetch some water from the stream for he said if you will bring me drink i will find means to provide myself with meat yes said the sheep if i should bring you draught you would doubtless make me provide the meat also hypocritical speeches are easily seen through the cock and the jewel a cock scratching for food for himself and his hens found a precious stone on which he said if thy owner had found thee and not i he would have taken thee up and have set thee in the first estate but i have found thee for no purpose i would rather have one barley corn than all the jewels in the world the raven and the swan a raven saw a swan and desired to secure for himself a like beauty of plumage supposing that his splendid white color arose from his washing in the water in which he swam the raven left the altars in the neighborhood of which he picked up his living and took up his abode in the lakes and pools but cleansing his feathers as often as he would he could not change their color while through want of food he perished change of habit cannot alter nature the lioness a controversy prevailed among the beasts of the field as to which of the animals deserved the most credit for producing the greatest number of whelps at a birth they rushed clamorously into the presence of the lioness and demanded of her the settlement of the dispute and you they said how many sons have you at a birth the lioness laughed at them and said why i have only one but that one is altogether a thoroughbred lion the value is in the worth not in the number end of section 1 section 3 of aesop's fables a new revised version this librivox recording is in the public domain
The Old Man and the Three Young Men As an old man was planting a tree, three young men came along and began to make sport of him, saying, It shows your foolishness to be planting a tree at your age. The tree cannot bear fruit for many years, while you must very soon die. What is the use of your wasting your time in providing pleasure for others to share long after you are dead? The old man stopped in his labor and replied, Others before me provided for my happiness, and it is my duty to provide for those who shall come after me. As for life, who is sure of it for a day? You may all die before me. The old man's words came true. One of the young men went on a voyage at sea and was drowned. Another went to war and was shot, and the third fell from a tree and broke his neck. We should not think wholly of ourselves, and we should remember that life is uncertain. THE LION AND THE FOX A fox entered into partnership with a lion on the pretense of becoming his servant. Each undertook his proper duty in accordance with his own nature and powers. The fox discovered and pointed out the prey. The lion sprang on it and seized it. The fox soon became jealous of the lion, carrying off the lion's share, and said that he would no longer find out the prey, but would capture it on his own account. The next day he attempted to snatch a lamb from the fold, but fell himself a prey to the huntsman and his hounds. Keep to your place if you would succeed. THE HORSE AND THE STAG the horse had the plain entirely to himself. A stag intruded into his domain and shared his pasture. The horse, desiring to revenge himself on the stranger, requested a man, if he were willing, to help him in punishing the stag. The man replied that if the horse would receive a bit in his mouth and agree to carry him, he would contrive very effectual weapons against the stag. The horse consented and allowed the man to mount him. From that hour he found that, instead of obtaining revenge on the stag, he had enslaved himself to the service of man. He who seeks to injure others often injures only himself. THE LION AND THE DOLPHIN A lion, roaming by the seashore, saw a dolphin lift up its head out of the waves, and asked him to contract an alliance with him, saying that of all the animals they ought to be best friends, since the one was the king of beasts on the earth, and the other was the sovereign ruler of all the inhabitants of the ocean. The dolphin gladly consented to this request. Not long afterwards the lion had a combat with a wild bull, and called on the dolphin to help him. The dolphin, though quite willing to give him assistance, was unable to do so, as he could not by any means reach the land. The lion abused him as a traitor. The dolphin replied, Nay, my friend, blame not me, but nature, which, while giving me sovereignty of the sea, has quite denied me the power of living upon the land. Let every one stick to his own element. THE MICE IN COUNCIL The mice summoned a council to decide how they might best devise means for obtaining notice of the approach of their great enemy, the cat. Among the many plans devised, the one that found most favor was the proposal to tie a bell to the neck of the cat, that the mice, being warned by the sound of the tinkling, might run away and hide themselves in their holes at his approach. But when the mice further debated who among them should thus bell the cat, there was no one found to do it. Let those who propose be willing to perform. THE CAMEL AND THE ARAB An Arab camel-driver, having completed the lading of his camel, asked him which he would like best to go uphill or downhill. The poor beast replied, not without a touch of reason, Why do you ask me? Is it that the level way through the desert is closed? 
THE FIGHTING COCKS AND THE EAGLE Two gamecocks were fiercely fighting for the mastery of the farmyard. One at last put the other to flight. The vanquished cock skulked away and hid himself in a quiet corner. The conqueror, flying up to a high wall, flapped his wings and crowed exultingly with all his might. An eagle, sailing through the air, pounced upon him and carried him off in his talons. The vanquished cock immediately came out of his corner and ruled henceforth with undisputed mastery. Pride goes before destruction. The Boys and the Frogs Some boys playing near a pond saw a number of frogs in the water and began to pelt them with stones. They killed several of them when one of the frogs, lifting his head out of the water, cried out, Pray stop, my boys. What is sport to you is death to us. What we do in sport often makes great trouble for others. THE CRAB AND ITS MOTHER A crab said to her son, Why do you walk so one-sided, my child? It is far more becoming to go straight forward. The young crab replied, Quite true, dear mother, and if you will show me the straight way, I will promise to walk in it. The mother tried, in vain, and submitted without remonstrance to the reproof of her child. Example is more powerful than precept. THE WOLF AND THE SHEPHERD A wolf followed a flock of sheep for a long time, and did not attempt to injure one of them. The shepherd at first stood on his guard against him as against an enemy, and kept a strict watch over his movements. But when the wolf, day after day, kept in the company of the sheep and did not make the slightest effort to seize them, the shepherd began to look upon him as a guardian of his flock rather than as a plotter of evil against it. And when the occasion called him one day into the city, he left the sheep entirely in his charge. The wolf, now that he had the opportunity, fell upon the sheep and destroyed the greater part of the flock. The shepherd, on his return, finding his flock destroyed, exclaimed, I have been rightly served. Why did I trust my sheep to a wolf? An evil mind will show in evil action sooner or later. THE MAN AND THE LION a man and a lion traveled together through the forest. They soon began to boast of their respective superiority to each other in strength and prowess. As they were disputing, they passed a statue carved in stone which represented a lion strangled by a man. The traveler pointed to it and said, See, there, how strong we are, and how we prevail over even the king of beasts. The lion replied, this statue was made by one of you men. If we lions knew how to erect statues, you would see the man placed under the paw of the lion. One story is good till another is told. THE OX AND THE FROG An ox drinking at a pool trod on a brood of young frogs and crushed one of them to death. The mother, coming up and missing one of her sons, inquired of his brothers what had become of him. He is dead, dear mother, for just now a very huge beast with four great feet came to the pool and crushed him to death with his cloven heel. The frog, puffing herself out, inquired if the beast was as big as that in size. Cease, mother, to puff yourself out, said her son, and do not be angry, for you would, I assure you, sooner burst than successfully imitate the hugeness of that monster. Impossible things we cannot hope to attain, and it is of no use to try. THE BIRDS, THE BEASTS, AND THE BAT The birds waged war with the beasts, and each party were by turns the conquerors, a bat fearing the uncertain issues of the fight always betook himself to that side which was the strongest. When peace was proclaimed, his deceitful conduct was apparent to both the combatants. He was driven forth from the light of day, 
and henceforth concealed himself in dark hiding-places, flying always alone and at night. Those who practice deceit must expect to be shunned. THE CHARCOAL BURNER AND THE FULLER A charcoal burner carried on his trade in his own house. One day he met a friend, a fuller, and entreated him to come and live with him, saying that they should be far better neighbors, and that their housekeeping expenses would be lessened. The fuller replied, The arrangement is impossible as far as I am concerned, for whatever I should whiten, you would immediately blacken again with your charcoal. Like will draw like. THE BULL AND THE GOAT a bull, escaping from a lion, entered a cave which some shepherds had lately occupied. A he-goat was left in it, who sharply attacked him with his horns. The bull quietly addressed him, But away as much as you will. I have no fear of you, but of the lion. Let that monster once go, and I will soon let you know what is the respective strength of a goat and a bull. It shows an evil disposition to take advantage of a friend in distress. THE LION AND THE MOUSE A lion was awakened from sleep by a mouse running over his face. Rising up in anger, he caught him, and was about to kill him, when the mouse piteously entreated, saying, If you would only spare my life, I would be sure to repay your kindness. The lion laughed and let him go. It happened shortly after this that the lion was caught by some hunters, who bound him by strong ropes to the ground. The mouse, recognizing his roar, came up and gnawed the rope with his teeth, and, setting him free, exclaimed, You ridiculed the idea of my being able to help you, not expecting to receive from me any repayment of your favor, but now you know that it is possible for even a mouse to confer benefits on a lion. No one is too weak to do good. THE HORSE AND THE ASS A horse, proud of his fine trappings, met an ass on the highway. The ass, being heavily laden, moved slowly out of the way. Hardly, said the horse, can I resist kicking you with my heels. The ass held his peace and made only a silent appeal to the justice of the gods. Not long afterward, the horse, having become broken-winded, was sent by his owner to the farm. The ass, seeing him drawing a dung-cart, thus derided him, Where, O boaster, are now all thy gay trappings, thou who art thyself reduced to the condition you so lately treated with contempt? THE OLD HOUND a hound who in the days of his youth and strength had never yielded to any beast of the forest encountered in his old age a boar in the chase he seized him boldly by the ear but could not retain his hold because of the decay of his teeth so that the boar escaped his master quickly coming up was very much disappointed and fiercely abused the dog the hound looked up and said it is not my fault, master. My spirit was as good as ever, but I could not help mine infirmities. I rather deserve to be praised for what I have been than to be blamed for what I am. No one should be blamed for his infirmities. THE CROW AND THE PITCHER A crow, perishing with thirst, saw a pitcher, and, hoping to find water, flew to it with great delight. When he reached it, he discovered to his grief that it contained so little water that he could not possibly get at it. He tried everything he could think of to reach the water, but all his efforts were in vain. At last he collected as many stones as he could carry, and dropped them one by one with his beak into the pitcher, until he brought the water within his reach, and thus saved his life. Necessity is the mother of invention. THE ASS EATING THISTLES An ass was loaded with good provisions of several sorts, which in time of harvest he was carrying into the field for his master and the reapers to dine upon. 
By the way, he met with a fine large thistle, and, being very hungry, began to mumble it. And while he was doing so, he entered into this reflection. How many greedy epicures would think themselves happy amidst such delicate viands as I now carry! But to me this bitter, prickly thistle is more savory and relishing than the most exquisite and sumptuous banquet. Let others choose what they may for food, but give me, above everything, a fine, juicy thistle like this, and I will be content. Every one to his taste. One man's meat is another man's poison, and one man's poison is another man's meat. What is rejected by one person may be valued very highly by another. End of section 3 Section 5 of Aesop's Fables, a new revised version. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. THE BEAR AND THE TWO TRAVELERS Two men were traveling together when a bear suddenly met them on their path. One of them climbed up quickly into a tree and concealed himself in the branches. The other, seeing that he must be attacked, fell flat on the ground, and when the bear came up and felt him with his snout and smelt him all over, he held his breath and feigned the appearance of death as much as he could. The bear soon left him, for it is said he will not touch a dead body. When he was quite gone, the other traveller descended from the tree, and, accosting his friend, jocularly inquired what it was the bear had whispered in his ear. His friend replied, He gave me this advice. Never travel with a friend who deserts you at the approach of danger. Misfortune tests the sincerity of friends. THE SICK KITE A kite, sick unto death, said to his mother, O oh, mother, do not mourn, but at once invoke the gods that my life may be prolonged. She replied, Alas, my son, which of the gods do you think will pity you? Is there one whom you have not outraged by filching from their very altars a part of the sacrifice which had been offered up to them? We must make friends in prosperity, if we would have their help in adversity. THE WOLF AND THE CRANE A wolf, having a bone stuck in his throat, hired a crane, for a large sum, to put her head into his throat and draw out the bone. When the crane had extracted the bone and demanded the promised payment, the wolf, grinning and grinding his teeth, exclaimed, why, you have surely already a sufficient recompense in having been permitted to draw out your head in safety from the mouth and jaws of a wolf. In serving the wicked, expect no reward, and be thankful if you escape injury for your pains. THE CAT AND THE COCK A cat caught a cock and took counsel with himself how he might find a reasonable excuse for eating him. He accused him of being a nuisance to men by crowing in the night-time and not permitting them to sleep. The cock defended himself by saying that he did this for the benefit of men, that they might rise betimes for their labors. The cat replied, Although you abound in specious apologies, I shall not remain supperless. And he made a meal of him. It does no good to deny those who make false accusations knowingly. THE WOLF AND THE HORSE A wolf, coming out of a field of oats, met with the horse, and thus addressed him. I would advise you to go into that field. It is full of capital oats, which I have left untouched for you, as you are a friend the very sound of whose teeth it would be a pleasure to me to hear. The horse replied, If oats had been the food for wolves, you would never have indulged your ears at the cost of your belly. Men of evil reputation, when they perform a good deed, fail to get credit for it. THE TWO SOLDIERS AND THE ROBBER Two soldiers, travelling together, were set upon by a robber. The one fled away, 
the other stood his ground and defended himself with his stout right hand the robber being slain the timid companion runs up and draws his sword and then throwing back his traveling cloak says i'll be at him and i'll take care he shall learn whom he has attacked on this he who had fought with the robber made answer i only wish that you had helped me just now even if it had only been with those words for i should have been the more encouraged believing them to be true but now put up your sword in its sheath and hold your equally useless tongue till you can deceive others who do not know you i indeed who have experienced with what speed you ran away know right well that no dependence can be placed on your valor when a coward is once found out his pretensions of valor are useless the monkey and the cat a monkey and a cat lived in the same family and it was hard to tell which was the greatest thief one day as they were roaming about together they spied some chestnuts roasting in the ashes come said the cunning monkey we shall not go without our dinner today your claws are better than mine for the purpose you pull them out of the hot ashes and you shall have half pussy pulled them out one by one burning her claws very much in doing so when she had stolen them all she found that the monkey had eaten every one a thief cannot be trusted even by another thief the two frogs two frogs dwelt in the same pool the pool being dried up under the summer's heat they left it and set out together for another home as they went along they chanced to pass a deep well amply supplied with water on seeing which one of the frogs said to the other let us descend and make our abode in this well the other replied with greater caution but suppose the water should fail us how can we get out again from so great a depth do nothing without a regard to the consequences the vine and the goat a vine was luxuriant in the time of vintage with leaves and grapes a goat passing by nibbled its young tendrils and its leaves the vine said why do you thus injure me and crop my leaves is there no young grass left but i shall not have to wait long for my just revenge for if you now crop my leaves and cut me down to my root i shall provide the wine to pour over you when you are led as a victim to the sacrifice retribution is certain the mouse and the boasting rat a mouse lived in a granary which became after a while the frequent resort of a cat the mouse was in great fear and did not know what to do in her strait she bethought herself of a rat who lived not far away and who had said in her hearing a hundred times that he was not afraid of any cat living she resolved to visit the bold rat and ask him to drive the cat away she found the rat in his hold and relating her story besought his help pooh said the rat you should be bold as i am go straight about your affairs and do not mind the cat i will soon follow you and drive him away he thought now he must do something to make good his boast so he collected all the rats in the neighborhood resolved to frighten the cat by numbers but when they all came to the granary they found that the cat had already caught the foolish mouse and a single growl from him sent them all scampering to their holes do not rely on a boaster the dogs and the fox some dogs finding the skin of a lion began to tear it in pieces with their teeth a fox seeing them said if this lion were alive you would soon find out that his claws were stronger than your teeth it is easy to kick a man that is down the thief and the house dog a thief came in the night to break into a house he brought with him several slices of meat that he might pacify the house dog so that he should not alarm his master by barking as the thief threw the pieces of meat the dog said 
If you think to stop my mouth, to relax my vigilance, or even to gain my regard by these gifts, you are greatly mistaken. This sudden kindness at your hands will only make me more watchful, lest under these unexpected favors to myself you have some private ends to accomplish for your own benefit and for my master's injury. Besides, this is not the time that I am usually fed, which makes me all the more suspicious of your intentions. He who offers bribes needs watching, for his intentions are not honest. THE SICK STAG A sick stag lay down in a quiet corner of his pasture-ground. His companions came in great numbers to inquire after his health, and each one helped himself to a share of the food which had been placed for his use, so that he died, not from his sickness, but from the failure of the means of living. Evil companions bring more hurt than profit. THE FOWLER AND THE RING-DOVE A fowler took his gun and went into the woods a-shooting. He spied a ring-dove among the branches of an oak, and intended to kill it. He clapped the piece to his shoulder and took his aim accordingly, but just as he was going to pull the trigger, an adder which he had trod upon under the grass stung him so painfully in the leg that he was forced to quit his design and threw his gun down in a passion. The poison immediately infected his blood, and his whole body began to mortify, which, when he perceived, he could not help owning it to be just. Fate, said he, has brought destruction upon me while I was contriving the death of another. Men often fall into the trap which they prepare for others. THE KID AND THE WOLF a kid, returning without protection from the pasture, was pursued by a wolf. He turned round and said to the wolf, I know, friend wolf, that I must be your prey, but before I die I would ask of you one favor, that you will play me a tune to which I can dance. The wolf complied, and while he was piping and the kid was dancing, the hounds, hearing the sound, came up and gave chase to the wolf. The wolf, turning to the kid, said, it is just what I deserve, for I, who am only a butcher, should not have turned piper to please you. Every one should keep his own colors. THE BLIND MAN AND THE WHELP A blind man was accustomed to distinguishing different animals by touching them with his hands. The whelp of a wolf was brought him, with a request that he would feel it and say what it was. He felt it and being in doubt said i do not quite know whether it is the cub of a fox or the whelp of a wolf but this i know full well that it would not be safe to admit him to the sheepfold evil tendencies are shown early in life the geese and the cranes the geese and the cranes fed in the same meadow a bird capture came to ensnare them in his nets the cranes, being light of wing, fled away at his approach, while the geese, being slower of flight and heavier in their bodies, were captured. Those who are caught are not always the most guilty. THE NORTH WIND AND THE SUN The north wind and the sun disputed which was the more powerful, and agreed that he should be declared the victor, who could first strip a wayfaring man of his clothes. The north wind first tried his power, and blew with all his might, but the keener became his blasts, the closer the traveller wrapped his cloak around him, till at last, resigning all hope of victory, he called upon the sun to see what he could do. The sun suddenly shone out with all his warmth. The traveller no sooner felt his genial rays than he took off one garment after another, and at last, fairly overcome with heat, undressed and bathed in a stream that lay in his path. Persuasion is better than force. End of section 5
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Boar and the Ass A little scoundrel of an ass, happening to meet with a boar, had a mind to be arch upon him, and so, says he, Your humble servant. The boar, somewhat nettled at his familiarity, bristled up to him and told him he was surprised to hear him utter so impudent an untruth, and was going to show his resentment by giving him a rip in the flank, but wisely stifling his passion, he contented himself with saying, Go, you sorry beast, I do not care to foul my tusks with the blood of so base a creature. Dignity cannot afford to quarrel with its inferiors. THE FOX AND THE GOAT A fox, having fallen into a well, could find no means of escape. A goat, overcome with thirst, came to the well, and seeing the fox inquired if the water was good. The fox, concealing his sad plight under a merry guise, indulged in lavish praise of the water, saying it was beyond measure excellent, and encouraged him to descend. The goat, mindful only of his thirst, thoughtlessly jumped down, when, just as he quenched his thirst, the fox informed him of the difficulty they were both in, and suggested a scheme for their common escape. If, said he, you will place your forefeet upon the wall, and bend your head I will run up your back and escape, and will help you out. On the goat readily assenting to this proposal, the fox leaped upon his back, and, steadying himself with the goat's horns, reached in safety the mouth of the well, and immediately made off as fast as he could. The goat upbraided him with the breach of his bargain, when he turned round and cried out, You foolish fellow! If you had as many brains in your head as you have hairs in your beard, you would never have gone down before you had inspected the way up, nor have exposed yourself to danger from which you had determined upon no means of escape. Look before you leap. THE OXEN AND THE BUTCHERS The oxen, once upon a time, sought to destroy the butchers, who practiced a trade destructive to their race. They assembled on a certain day to carry out their purpose, and sharpened their horns for the contest. One of them, an exceedingly old one, for many a field had he ploughed, thus spoke. These butchers, it is true, slaughter us, but they do so with skilful hands, and with no unnecessary pain. If we get rid of them, we shall fall into the hands of unskillful operators, and thus suffer a double death. For you may be assured that, though all the butchers should perish, yet will men ever want beef. Do not be in a hurry to change one evil for another. THE HORSE AND HIS RIDER A horse-soldier took great pains with his charger. As long as the war lasted, he looked upon him as his fellow-helper in all emergencies, and fed him carefully with hay and corn. When the war was over, he only allowed him chaff to eat, and made him carry heavy loads of wood, and subjected him to much slavish drudgery and ill-treatment. War, however, being again proclaimed, the soldier put on his charger its military trappings, and mounted, being clad in his heavy coat of mail. The horse fell down straight away under the weight, no longer equal to the burden, and said to his master, You must now go to the war on foot, for you have transformed me from a horse into an ass. He who slights his friends when they are not needed must not expect them to serve him when he needs them. THE DOG AND THE HARE A hound, having started a hare on the hillside, pursued her for some distance, at one time biting her with his teeth, as if he would take her life, and at another time fawning upon her, as if in play with another dog. The hare said to him, I wish you would act sincerely by me, and show yourself in your true colors. 
If you are a friend, why do you bite me so hard? If you are an enemy, why do you fawn on me? There are no friends whom you know not whether to trust or to distrust. THE FAWN AND HIS MOTHER A young fawn once said to his mother, You are larger than a dog, and swifter, and more used to running. Why then, O oh mother, are you always in such a terrible fright of the hounds? She smiled and said, I know full well, my son, that all you say is true. I have the advantages you mention, but yet when I hear the bark of a single dog, I feel ready to faint. No arguments will give courage to the coward. THE LARK AND HER YOUNG ONES A lark had made her nest in the young green wheat. The brood had almost grown when the owner of the field, overlooking his crop, said, I must send to all my neighbors to help me with my harvest. One of the young larks heard him and asked his mother to what place they should move for safety. There was no occasion to move yet, my son, she replied. The owner of the field came a few days later and said, I will come myself tomorrow and will get in the harvest. Then the lark said to her brood, It is time now to be off. He no longer trusts to his friends, but will reap the field himself. Self-help is the best help. THE BOWMAN AND THE LION a very skillful bowman went to the mountains in search of game. All the beasts of the forest fled at his approach. The lion alone challenged him to combat. The bowman immediately let fly an arrow, and said to the lion, I send thee my messenger, that from him thou mayest learn what I myself shall be when I assail thee. The lion, thus wounded, rushed away in great fear, and, on a fox exhorting him to be of good courage and not to run away at the first attack, he replied, You counsel me in vain, for if he sends so fearful a messenger, how shall I abide the attack of the man himself? A man who can strike from a distance is no pleasant neighbor. THE BOY AND THE FILBERTS a boy put his hand into a pitcher full of filberts. He grasped as many as he could possibly hold, but when he endeavored to pull out his hand, he was prevented from doing so by the neck of the pitcher, which was much smaller than his closed hand. Unwilling to lose his filberts, and yet unable to withdraw his hand, he burst into tears and bitterly lamented his disappointment. A bystander said to him, be satisfied with half the quantity, and you will readily draw out your hand. Do not attempt too much at once. THE WOMAN AND HER HEN A woman possessed a hen that gave her an egg every day. She often thought with herself how she might obtain two eggs daily instead of one, and at last, to gain her purpose, determined to give the hen a double allowance of barley. From that day the hen became fat and sleek, and never once laid another egg. Covetousness overreacheth itself. THE LAMB AND THE WOLF A wolf pursued a lamb which fled for refuge to a certain temple. The wolf called out to him and said, The priest will slay you in sacrifice if he should catch you on which the lamb replied, It would be better for me to be sacrificed in the temple than to be eaten by you. It is safer to be among friends than enemies. THE BEAR AND THE GARDENER A gardener, who lived alone, became discontented, and set out one day to seek a friend who would be a suitable companion. He had not gone far when he met a bear, whom he invited to come and live with him. The bear was a very silly one, who was also discontented with living alone, so he went home with the gardener very willingly. The gardener provided all the food, and the only service he required of the bear was to keep the flies off his face while he slept in the shade. One day 
a fly insisted upon lighting on the gardener's face, although he was brushed off again and again. The silly bear finally became so enraged that he threw a heavy stone upon it. He killed the fly, but alas, he also killed his friend. Better have no friend at all than a foolish one. THE HEIFER AND THE OX A heifer saw an ox hard at work, harnessed to a plow, and tormented him with the reflections on his unhappy fate in being compelled to labor. Shortly afterward, at the harvest home, the owner released the ox from his yoke, but bound the heifer with cords, and led her away to the altar to be slain in honor of the festival. The ox saw what was being done, and said to the heifer, for this you were allowed to live in idleness, because you were presently to be sacrificed. The lives of the idle can best be spared. THE EAGLE AND THE FOX An eagle and a fox formed an intimate friendship, and decided to live near each other. The eagle built her nest in a tall tree, while the fox crept into the underwood and there produced her young. Not long after, when the fox was ranging for food, the eagle, being in want of provision for her young ones, swooped down and seized one of the little cubs, and feasted herself and brood. The fox, on her return, discovering what had happened, was less grieved for the death of her young than for her inability to avenge them. A just retribution, however, quickly fell upon the eagle. While hovering near an altar on which some villagers were sacrificing a goat, she suddenly seized a piece of flesh, and carried with it to her nest a burning cinder. A strong breeze soon fanned the spark into a flame, and the eaglets, as yet unfledged and helpless, were roasted in their nest and dropped down dead at the bottom of the tree. The fox gobbled them up in the sight of the eagle. The tyrant is never safe from those whom he oppresses. THE HAWK AND THE NIGHTINGALE A nightingale, sitting aloft upon an oak, was seen by a hawk, who made a swoop down and seized him. The nightingale earnestly besought the hawk to let him go, saying that he was not big enough to satisfy the hunger of a hawk who ought to pursue the larger birds. The hawk said, I should indeed have lost my senses if I should let go food ready to my hand, for the sake of pursuing birds which are not yet even within sight. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. THE HEN AND THE SWALLOW A hen, finding the eggs of a viper, and carefully keeping them warm, nourished them into life. A swallow, observing what she had done, said, you silly creature, why have you hatched these vipers, which, when they shall have grown, will surely inflict injury on all of us, beginning with yourself? If we nourish evil, it will sooner or later turn upon us. THE HERDSMAN AND THE LOST BULL A herdsman, tending kine in a forest, lost a bull-calf from the fold. After a long and fruitless search, he made a vow that if he could only discover the thief who had stolen the calf, he would offer a lamb in sacrifice to the guardian deities of the forest. Not long afterwards, as he ascended a small hillock, he saw at its foot a lion feeding on the calf. Terrified at the sight, he lifted his eyes and his hands to heaven and said, Just now I vowed to offer a lamb to the guardian deities of the forest, if I could only find out who had robbed me. But now that I have discovered the thief, I would willingly add a full-grown bull to the calf I have lost, and give them both to the guardians of the forest, if I may only secure my own escape from this terrible lion in safety. That which we are anxious to find we are sometimes even more anxious to escape from when we have succeeded in finding it. THE SHEPHERD'S BOY AND WOLF A shepherd boy, who watched a flock of sheep near a village, brought out the villagers three or four times by crying out, Wolf! Wolf! And when his neighbors came to help him, 
laughed at them for their pains. The wolf, however, did truly come at last. The shepherd boy, now really alarmed, shouted in an agony of terror, Pray do come and help me. The wolf is killing the sheep. But no one paid any heed to his cries. There is no believing a liar, even when he speaks the truth. THE HAWK, THE KITE, AND THE PIGEONS The pigeons, terrified by the appearance of a kite, called upon the hawk to defend them. He at once consented. When they had admitted him into the coat, they found that he made more havoc and slew a larger number of them in a single day than the kite could possibly pounce upon in a whole year. Avoid a remedy that is worse than the disease. THE FARMER AND THE CRANES Some cranes made their feeding grounds on some plough lands newly sown with wheat. For a long time the farmer, brandishing an empty sling, chased them away by the terror he inspired. But when the birds found that the sling was only swung in the air, they ceased to take any notice of it and would not move. The farmer, on seeing this, charged his sling with stones and killed a great number. They at once forsook his plough-lands and cried to each other, It is time for us to be off, for this man is no longer content to scare us, but begins to show us in earnest what he can do. If words suffice not, blows must follow. THE CAT AND THE MICE A certain house was overrun with mice. A cat, discovering this, made her way into it and began to catch and eat them one by one. The mice, being continually devoured, kept themselves close in their holes. The cat, no longer able to get at them, perceived that she must tempt them forth by some device. For this purpose she jumped upon a peg, and, suspending herself from it, pretended to be dead. When the mice came near, she pounced upon them and killed a great number. Pleased with the success of this trick, she tried another. She whitened herself with flour, and lay still on the heap of bags, as though she was one of them. The young mice crept dangerously near her, but an old one, peering stealthily out, said, Ah, my good madam, though you should turn into a real flour-bag, I will not come too near you. Avoid even appearance of danger. End of section 7、section、nine of Aesop's Fables, A New Revised Version. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Wolves and the Sheep. Why should there always be this implacable warfare between us? said the wolves to the sheep. Those evil disposed dogs have much to answer for. They always bark whenever we approach and attack us before we have done any harm. If you would only dismiss them from your heels, there might soon be treaties of peace between us. The sheep, poor silly creatures, were easily beguiled and dismissed the dogs. The wolves destroyed the unguarded flock at their pleasure. Change not friends. For foes. The Fox and the Stark. The fox invited the stork to dinner, and provided nothing but a soup in a wide, shallow dish. This he could lap up with ease, but the stork, who could but dip in the point of his bill, was not a bit better. A few days after he returned the compliment, and invited the fox. But suffered nothing to be brought to the table but some minced meat in a glass jar, the neck of which was so deep and so narrow that, though the stork with his long bill could eat very well, all that the fox could do was to lick the brims. Reynard was heartily vexed, but owned that he had been used as he deserved. Those who practice cunning must expect to suffer by it. The Bat and the Weasels a bat, falling upon the ground, was caught by a weasel, of whom he earnestly besought his life. 
The weasel refused, saying that he was by nature the enemy of all birds. The bat assured him that he was not a bird, but a mouse, and thus saved his life. Shortly afterward the bat again fell on the ground and was caught by another weasel, whom he likewise entreated not to eat him. The weasel said that he had a special hostility to mice. The bat assured him that he was not a mouse, but a bat, and thus a second time escaped. THE HARE AND THE TORTOISE A hare one day ridiculed the short feet and slow pace of the tortoise. The latter, laughing, said, Though you be swift as the wind, I will beat you in a race. The hare, deeming her assertion to be simply impossible, assented to the proposal, and they agreed that the fox should choose the course and fix the goal. On the day appointed for the race they started together. The tortoise never for a moment stopped, but went on with a slow but steady pace straight to the end of the course. The hare, trusting to his native swiftness, cared little about the race, and, lying down by the wayside, fell fast asleep. At last, waking up, and moving as fast as he could, he saw the tortoise had reached the goal, and was comfortably dozing after her fatigue. Perseverance is surer than swiftness. JUPITER AND THE MONKEY Jupiter issued a proclamation to all the beasts of the forest, and promised a royal reward to the one whose offspring should be deemed the handsomest. The monkey came with the rest, and presented, with all a mother's tenderness, a flat-nosed, hairless, ill-featured young monkey as a candidate for the promised reward. A general laugh saluted her on the presentation of her son. She resolutely said, I know not whether Jupiter will allot the prize to my son, but this I do know, that he is the dearest, handsomest, and most beautiful of all who are here. A mother's love blinds her to many imperfections. THE LION IN LOVE A lion demanded the daughter of a woodcutter in marriage. The father, unwilling to grant and yet afraid to refuse his request, hit upon this expedient. He expressed his willingness to accept him as a suitor of his daughter on one condition, that he should allow him to extract his teeth and cut off his claws. The lion cheerfully assented to the proposal when, however, he next repeated his request. The woodman set upon him with his club. THE MISER A miser had a lump of gold, which he buried in the ground, coming to look at the spot every day. One day he found that it was stolen, and he began to tear his hair and loudly lament. A neighbor, seeing him, said, Pray, do not grieve so. Bury a stone in the hole, and fancy it is the gold. It will serve you just as well, for when the goal was there you made no use of it. A wolf saw a goat feeding at the summit of a steep precipice, where he had not a chance of reaching her. He called to her, and earnestly besought her to come lower down, lest she should by some mishap get a fall, and he added that the meadows lay where he was standing, and that the herbage was most tender. She replied, no, my friend, it is not of me you are thinking, but of yourself. Invitations prompted by selfishness are not to be accepted. A Bald Knight A bald knight, who wore a wig, went out to hunt. A sudden puff of wind blew off his hat and wig, at which a loud laugh rang forth from his companions. He joined in the joke by saying, what marvel that hairs which are not mine should fly from me, when my own have forsaken even the man with whom they were born? Those who cannot take care of their own should not be entrusted with the care of another's property. THE FOX AND THE WOODCUTTER A fox running before the hounds came across a woodcutter felling an oak, and besought him to show him a safe hiding-place. The woodcutter advised him to take shelter in his own hut. 
The fox crept in and hid himself in a corner. The huntsman came up with his hounds in a few minutes, and inquired of the woodcutter if he had seen the fox. He declared that he had not seen him, and yet pointed all the time he was speaking to the hut where the fox lay hid. The huntsman took no notice of the signs, but believing his word, hastened forward in the chase. As soon as they were well away, the fox departed without taking any notice of the woodcutter, whereon he called to him and reproached him, saying, "'You ungrateful fellow, you owe your life to me, and yet you leave me without a word of thanks.' The fox replied, "'Indeed, I should have thanked you most fervently, if your deeds had been as good as your words.'" THE KID AND THE WOLF A kid, mounted on a high rock, bestowed all manner of abuse upon a wolf on the ground below. The wolf, looking up, replied, "'Do not think, vain creature, that you annoy me. I regard this ill language as coming not from you, but from the place on which you stand.'" THE LION, THE BEAR, AND THE FOX A lion and a bear seized upon a kid at the same moment, and fought fiercely for its possession. When they had fearfully lacerated each other, and were faint from the long combat, they lay down exhausted with fatigue. A fox, who had gone round them at a distance several times, saw them both stretched on the ground, and the kid lying untouched in the middle, ran in between them and seized the kid, scampering off as fast as he could. The lion and the bear saw him, but not being able to get up, said, Woe betide us that we should have fought and belabored ourselves only to serve the turn of a fox. It sometimes happens that one man has all the toil, and another all the profit. THE STAG IN THE OX STALL A stag, hardly pressed by the hounds, and blind from fear to the danger he was running into, took shelter in a farmyard, and hid himself in a shed among the oxen. An ox gave him this kindly warning, O oh, unhappy creature, why should you thus of your own accord incur destruction, and trust yourself in the house of your enemy? The stag replied, Do you only suffer me, friend, to stay where I am, and I will undertake to find some favorable opportunity of effecting my escape. At the approach of the evening the herdsman came to feed his cattle, but did not see the stag. The stag, congratulating himself on his safety, began to express his sincere thanks to the oxen who had kindly afforded him help in the hour of need. One of them again answered him, "'We indeed wish you well, but the danger is not over. There is one other yet to pass through this shed, who has as it were a hundred eyes, and until he has come and gone your life is still in peril. At that moment the master himself entered, and having had to complain that his oxen had not been properly fed, he went up to their racks and cried out, Why is there such a scarcity of fodder? There is not half enough straw for them to lie on. Those lazy fellows have not even swept the cobwebs away. While he thus examined everything, he spied the antlers of the stag peeping out of the straw. Summoning his laborers, he ordered that the stag should be killed. What is safety for one is not always safety for another. THE EAGLE AND THE JACKDAW An eagle, flying down from his airy on a lofty rock, seized upon a lamb and carried him aloft in his talons. A jackdaw who witnessed the capture of the lamb was stirred with envy, and determined to emulate the strength and flight of the eagle. He flew round with a great whir of its wings, and settled upon a large sheep with the intention of carrying it off, but his claws becoming entangled in his fleece, he was unable to release himself, although he fluttered with his feathers as much as he could. The shepherd, seeing what had happened, ran up and caught him. He at once clipped his wings, and, taking him home at night, gave him to his children. We should not permit our ambition to lead us beyond the limits of our power. 
The Three Tradesmen A great city was besieged, and its inhabitants were called together to consider the best means of protecting it from the enemy. A bricklayer present earnestly recommended bricks, as it afforded the best materials for an effectual resistance. A carpenter with equal energy proposed timber as providing a preferable method of defense, upon which a courier stood up and said, Sirs, I differ from you altogether. There is no material for resistance equal to a covering of hides, and nothing so good as leather. Every man for his trade. THE DANCING MONKEYS A prince had some monkeys trained to dance. Being naturally great mimics of men's actions, they showed themselves most apt students, and when arrayed in their rich clothes and masks, they danced as well as any of the courtiers. The spectacle was often repeated with great applause, till on one occasion a courtier, bent on mischief, took from his pocket a handful of nuts and threw them upon the stage. The monkeys, at the sight of the nuts, forgot their dancing and became, as indeed they were, monkeys instead of actors, and pulling off their masks and tearing their robes, they fought with one another for the nuts. The dancing spectacle thus came to an end amid the laughter and ridicule of the audience. Those who assume a character will betray themselves by their actions. THE ASS AND THE GRASSHOPPER An ass, having heard some grasshoppers chirping, was highly enchanted, and desiring to possess the same charms of melody, demanded what sort of food they lived on to give them such beautiful voices. They replied, The dew. The ass resolved that he would live only on dew, and in a short time died of hunger. Where one may live, another may starve. THE ASS IN THE LION SKIN An ass, having put on the lion skin, roamed about in the forest, and amused himself by frightening all the foolish animals he met with in his wanderings. At last, meeting a fox, he tried to frighten him also, but the fox no sooner heard the sound of his voice than he exclaimed, I might possibly have been frightened myself, if I had not heard your bray. No disguise will hide one's true character. THE BOY BATHING A boy bathing in a river was in danger of being drowned. He called out to a traveller passing by for help. The traveller, instead of holding out a helping hand, stood up unconcernedly and scolded the boy for his imprudence. "'Oh, sir!' cried the youth. "'Pray help me now and scold me afterwards.' Counsel without help is useless. THE COCK AND THE FOX The fox, passing early one summer's morning near a farmyard, was caught in a springe which the farmer had planted there for that end. The cock at a distance saw what happened, and, hardly yet daring to trust herself too near so dangerous a foe, approached him cautiously and peeped at him. Reynard addressed himself to him with all the designing artifice imaginable. "'Dear cousin,' said he, "'you see what an unfortunate accident has befallen me here. And all upon your account, for as I was creeping through yonder hedge in my way homeward, I heard you crow, and was resolved to ask you how you did before I went away any farther. But I met with this disaster, and therefore now I must ask you for a knife to cut this string, or at least to conceal my misfortune till I have gnawed it asunder. The cock, seeing how the case stood, made no reply, but posted away as fast as he could, and told the farmer, who came and killed the fox. To aid the vicious is to become a partner in their guilt. End of section 9Section 11 of Aesop's Fables, a new revised version. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Peacock and the Magpie 
the birds once met together to choose a king and among others the peacock was a candidate spreading his showy tail and stalking up and down with affected grandeur he caught the eyes of the silly multitude by his brilliant appearance and was elected with acclamation the magpie then stepped forth into the midst of the assembly and thus addressed the new king may it please your majesty elect to permit a humbler admirer to propose a question as our king we put our lives and fortunes in your hands if therefore the eagle the vulture and the kite should make a descent upon us what means would you take for our defence this pithy question opened the eyes of the birds to the weakness of their choice and they cancelled the election the two goats two goats started at the same moment from opposite ends to cross a rude bridge that was only wide enough for one to cross at a time meeting in the middle of the bridge neither would give way to the other they locked horns and fought for the right of way until they both fell into the torrent below and were drowned the dove and the ant an ant went to the bank of a river to quench its thirst and being carried away by the rush of the stream was on the point of being drowned a dove sitting on a tree overhanging the water plucked a leaf and let it fall into the stream close to her the ant climbing on it floated in safety to the bank shortly afterwards a bird catcher came close and stood under the tree and laid his lime twigs for the dove which sat in the branches the ant perceiving his design stung him in the foot he suddenly threw down the twigs and thereupon made the dove take wing the grateful heart will always find opportunities to show its gratitude the eagle and the beetle the eagle and the beetle were at enmity together and they destroyed one another's nests the eagle gave the first provocation in seizing upon and in eating the young ones of the beetle the beetle got by stealth at the eagle's eggs and rolled them out of the nest and followed the eagle even into the presence of jupiter on the eagle making his complaint jupiter ordered him to make his nest in his lap and while jupiter had the eggs in his lap the beetle came flying about him and jupiter rising up unawares to drive him away from his head threw down the eggs and broke them the weak often revenge themselves on those who use them ill even though they be the more powerful the mule a mule frolicsome from want of work and from overmuch corn galloped about in a very extravagant manner and said to himself my father surely was a high-mettled racer and i am his own child in speed and spirit on the next day being driven a long journey and feeling very weary he exclaimed in a disconsolate tone i must have made a mistake my father after all could have been only an ass the cat the weasel and the rabbit while a rabbit was absent from his hole one day a weasel took possession of it on the rabbit's return seeing the weasel's nose sticking out he said you must leave this hole immediately there is only room for one and it has always belonged to me and my fathers before me the more reason that you should give it up now said the weasel and leave its possession to me as they could not settle the dispute they agreed to leave the question of ownership to a wise old cat to whom they went without more ado i am deaf said the cat put your noses close to my ears no sooner had they done so than she clapped a paw upon each of them and killed them both the strong are apt to settle all questions by the rule of might the rat and the frog a rat in an evil day made acquaintance with a frog and they set off on their travels together 
the frog on pretense of great affection and of keeping his companion out of harm's way tied the rat's foot to his own hind leg and thus they proceeded for some distance by land presently they came to some water and the frog bidding the rat have good courage began to swim across they had scarcely however arrived midway when the frog took a sudden plunge to the bottom dragging the unfortunate rat after him but the struggling and floundering of the rat made so great a commotion in the water that it attracted the attention of a kite who pouncing down and bearing off the rat carried away the frog at the same time in his train inconsiderate and ill-matched alliances generally end in ruin and the man who compasses the destruction of his neighbor is often caught in his own snare the widow and the sheep there was a certain widow who had an only sheep and wishing to make the most of his wool she sheared him so closely that she cut his skin as well as his fleece the sheep smarting under this treatment cried out why do you torture me thus what will my blood add to the weight of the wool if you want my flesh dame send for the butcher who will put me out of my misery at once but if you want my fleece send for the shearer who will clip my wool without drawing my blood economy may be carried too far the man bitten by a dog a man who had been bitten by a dog was going about asking who could cure him one that met him said sir if you would be cured take a bit of bread and dip it in the blood of the wound and give it to the dog that bit you the man smiled and said if i were to follow your advice i would be bitten by all the dogs in the city he who proclaims himself ready to buy up his enemies will never want a supply of them the horse and the wolf a wolf saw a horse grazing in a field putting on a grave air he approached him and said sir you must be very ill i have some skill as a physician and if you will tell me where your ailment is i shall be glad to be of service said the horse if you will examine my foot you will find what ails me but as the wily wolf approached him with a kick he sent him flying into the air the goat herd and the goats it was a stormy day and the snow was falling fast when a goat herd drove his goats all white with snow into a desert cave for shelter there he found that a herd of wild goats more numerous and larger than his own had already taken possession <coughs> so thinking to secure them all he left his own goats to take care of themselves and threw the branches which he had brought for them to the wild goats to browse on but when the weather cleared up he found his own goats had perished from hunger while the wild goats were off and away to the hills and woods so the goat-herd returned a laughing-stock to his neighbors having failed to gain the wild goats and having lost his own those who neglect their old friends for the sake of new ones are rightly served if they lose both the goose with the golden eggs a certain man had the good fortune to possess a goose that laid a golden egg every day but dissatisfied with so slow an income and thinking to seize the whole treasure at once he killed the goose and cutting her open found her just what any other goose would be much once more and loses all the old woman and the wine jar an old woman found an empty jar which had lately been full of prime old wine and which still retained the fragrant smell of its former contents she greedily placed it several times to her nose and drawing it backwards and forwards said oh most delicious how nice must the wine itself have been when it leaves behind in every vessel which contained it so sweet a perfume the memory of a good deed lives 
The Ass Carrying Salt A certain huckster, who kept an ass, hearing that salt was to be had cheap at the seaside, drove his ass thither to buy some. Having loaded the beast as much as he could bear, he was driving him home when, as they were passing a slippery ledge of rock, the ass fell into the stream below, and the salt being melted, the ass was relieved of his burden, and having gained the bank with ease, pursued his journey onward, light in body and in spirit. The huckster, soon afterwards, set off for the seashore for some more salt, and loaded the ass, if possible, yet more heavily than before. On their return, as they crossed the stream into which he had formerly fallen, the ass fell down on purpose, and by dissolving the salt was again released from his load. The master, provoked at the loss, and thinking how he might cure him of this trick, on his next journey to the coast, freighted the beast with a load of sponges. When they arrived at the same stream as before, the ass was at his old tricks again, and rolled himself into the water, but he found to his cost, as he proceeded homeward, that instead of lightening his burden, he had more than doubled its weight. The same measures will not suit all circumstances. THE gnat AND THE BULL a gnat that had been buzzing about the head of a bull, at length settling himself down upon his horn, begged his pardon for incommoding him. But if, says he, my weight at all inconveniences you, pray say so, and I will be off in a moment. Oh, never trouble your head about that, says the bull, for tis all one to me whether you go or stay. And to say the truth, I did not know you were there. The smaller the mind, the greater the conceit. THE LION AND THE gnat. As a gnat was buzzing around a lion, the lion said to him, How dare you approach me near! Be off, or I will kill you with the least stroke of my paw. The gnat, knowing the advantage of his small size and his alertness, immediately challenged the boaster to combat and alighting first upon his nose and then upon his tail made the lion so furious that he injured himself grievously with his paws as the gnat flew away he boasted of his own prowess in thus defeating the king of beasts without the slightest injury to himself but in his carelessness he flew directly into a spider's web and the spider instantly seized and killed him the lion the ass and the fox hunting the lion the ass and the fox formed a party to go out hunting they took a large booty and when the sport was ended bethought themselves of having a hearty meal the lion bade the ass allot the spoil so dividing it into three equal parts the ass begged his friends to make their choice at which the lion in great indignation fell upon the ass and tore him to pieces. He then bade the fox make a division, who, gathering the whole into one great heap, reserved but the smallest mite for himself. "'Ah, friend,' says the lion, "'who taught you to make so equitable a division?' "'I wanted no other lesson,' replied the fox, "'than the ass's fate.' better be wise by misfortunes of others than by your own the dog whose ears were cropped a dog complained of the cruelty of her master in cutting off her ears and was so ashamed of her appearance that she resolved to stay in her kennel with her family a friendly hunting dog said to her if you had been peaceful and not always fighting you would have saved your ears and your good looks if you will fight, it is a kindness to crop your ears, that they may not give your enemy the advantage. THE WIND AND THE SUN A dispute once arose between the wind and the sun, which was the stronger of the two, and they agreed to settle the point upon this issue, that whichever of the two soonest made a traveller take off his cloak should be accounted the more powerful. 
the wind began and blew with all his might and main a blast cold and fierce as a thracian storm but the stronger he blew the closer the traveller wrapped his cloak around him and the tighter he grasped it with his hands then broke out the sun with his welcome beams he dispersed the vapour and the cold the traveller felt the genial warmth and as the sun shone brighter and brighter he sat down quite overcome with the heat and taking off his cloak cast it on the ground thus the sun was declared the conqueror and it has ever been deemed that persuasion is better than force and that the sunshine of a kind and gentle manner will sooner lay open a poor man's heart than all the threatenings and force of blustering authority the wild boar and the fox a wild boar was wetting his tusks against a tree when a fox coming by asked why he did so for said he i see no reason for it there is neither hunter nor hound in sight nor any other danger that i can see at hand true replied the boar but when that danger does arise i shall have something else to do than to sharpen my weapons it is too late to wet the sword when the trumpet sounds to draw it end of section 11